So, uh, good morning. Good. <laughs> welcome to Vlog Thursday. Yay. Hop and jalapenos. Oh, good. The cornerstone of any nutritious breakfast. Every nutritious breakfast should start no, with I jalapenos. No, I noticed he grabbed the smaller one. The bigger one might be better. Mm. We like jalapenos. We do. We had a lot of jalapenos, habaneros, and ghost peppers at our pork extravaganza. That's good. Thank you to everybody who showed up, made it a big success. And thank you to Ernie who brought us these out of his garden. Oh, yeah. He was cutting them up and putting them in his pork yesterday. Yeah, they are good. They are good. So yesterday we had a uh, pork event. <laughs> we had a pork moment. We'll just leave it at that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, when the cameras are off, we'll say all kinds of fun things. <laughs> Jalapenos and coffee. Mmm, delish. I could probably do that. Um, I'm going to finish my jalapeno now. <laughs> it's really good. <laughs> yeah, it gets the blood flowing, you know? Mm -hmm. Get you so every morning you start, just eat a jalapeno. Mm -hmm. We have pickled ones, too, if that's your We thing. have pickled ones? Yeah, Pops dropped that off for us, my dad. So thanks. Yeah, yeah. Okay, back to work. Mm. <laughs> Why we're here today. I'm doing a talk today, and uh, so this is my preparation for the talk, uh, eating jalapenos uh, and putting slides together, but it's a talk called Protecting the Digital You, and I'm mm -hmm. going to talk about protecting the digital you. Oh. And the concept is, in we have such a digital footprint that we leave, and it's tips and tricks of how to protect that digital footprint uh, from attack, from discovery, from, uh, well, just... I'm just trying to create an awareness for people of what is out Ooh. there, how the companies are tracking them. And uh, it's a talk I'll probably put together as a YouTube video as well, because what I generally do with my talks, I'm gonna try and record this particular talk I'm doing at this conference uh, later today. But I try to take, and my giveaway or takeaway is a post on our website so they can rewatch, have my entire slide deck and rewatch the whole video over again if they'd like. That way they have all of the <coughs> content as I put links in there. <clears throat> and uh, I've got a website that stalks you on Facebook that's pretty clever. I included oh, it in the talk. Okay. So that's going to be kind of fun. Uh, one of the things that people don't always think about is the way you can aggregate data on Facebook and use it for data mining to learn stuff about people. And, you know, politicians have uh, learned the hard way, mm. unfortunately, that one, everything on the internet is always on the internet, even when they don't want it to be on the internet. It doesn't um, go away. It doesn't go away. <laughs> and those secrets that you've revealed in an interview that didn't seem like secrets, like, hey, where were you born? We'd love to learn no more about you, person of in, in politics. And that sometimes leads to the question of, Let's reset password. Give me some information. Where were you born? Well, mm -hmm. I just watched an interview, mm -hmm. and they said they were born here. Or, you know, some people just simply put these secrets right out there. Because what are some of the questions that are asked? Like, hey, uh, what school did you go to? What was your elementary school teacher? Mm -hmm. Well, people fill that out on Facebook sometimes. Yeah, sure. So. Yeah. And those what are some was of your the first pet? That, what was your first pet? And you'll find that information frequently on just reading through people's Facebook. The other thing is I have a slide that just says don't. And <laughs> if you don't want it on the internet, you don't put it on the internet. No. Like in terms, well, especially social media sites. People think that they have the privacy settings set to something. That just doesn't work. I know Facebook's supposed to follow. If I don't put it to public, it shouldn't be public. Trust me, stuff ends up public if you post it to Facebook. It sure does. People take a screenshot <laughs> of it, they repost it. Um, Facebook, you know, they try to follow rules that they have, but people don't care about those rules. And this has led to many social media gaps where people decided to put things on there. And employers are really looking at this. Yes, uh, they are. I want to say, and I have some statistics, but it's got all the reasons that it was a survey done by uh, CareerBuilder.com, mm -hmm. and it's a survey of all the reasons people didn't get hired. <laughs> oh, oh, that's got to be good. <laughs> and some of them are just the way they talked about their previous employer oh. and slandered their previous employer, which makes the future employer go, hmm. Yeah. I, I actually really laugh because my uh, one of my friends, his daughter got fired from her job. Oh boy! <laughs> they have a very strict policy. You can't, she, she was a delivery driver uh, for a company, and they have a strict policy that says you cannot post on social media during work hours, especially because you know you're driving. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's right. like, so they're like, look, you, your phone, you're not supposed to be using it or anything. And while she was driving, she ranted about her boss and what she thought of him. He simply replied and took a screenshot of it, but replied <laughs> to the rant and said, did you forget that you friended me? That's all he put. <laughs> 
She, oh, that's uh, awesome. she was fired that day, then went to Daddy, and who's a friend of mine, and he's like, Dad, they fired me. And he's he's like, why? And he's seen it, and he's like, well, I would have mm, fired you. Yeah. Like, I can't defend this. No. <laughs> he, he screwed up. <laughs> like, he, did you forget you friended him? She goes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He goes, I don't know what to say. Were you texting and driving? Yeah. He goes, don't do that. <laughs> lesson learned. <laughs> lesson learned. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Speaking of lesson learned, I got to comment on this because <clears throat> I can't help it. It was funny and it's wrong. But uh, people who try to make absurd claims to the police, like locking themselves in the car, moving over to the passenger seat and claiming they weren't the one driving when the police was riding next to them trying to get them to pull over. They finally pulled over and hopped into the passenger seat. This happened right in our city, our neighboring city of Wyandotte. <laughs> I like the way the well, news article put it. The, <laughs> the police gently broke her window because after a 20-minute standoff, she refused to get out of her car, and she insisted she was not driving, she was traveling, and that there was a difference between those. Now, for those of you who don't know, and I, uh, what is it? Is it Thompson versus Smith? There's actually a Supreme Court case uh, that was heard on this. And okay. it's the concept that um, because of the way it was worded back in the earliest days of driver's licenses, that you um, were traveling if you didn't have cargo was the way people perceived it. You were just okay. traveling, so you didn't need a driver's license unless it was to cargo, uh, as in you were hauling something. Oh, okay. It, early days of licenses, and it was interpretation. So the Supreme Court... You know, this is like some Supreme Court is going, I'm Supreme Court just, and I have to decide whether or not driving and traveling are two different things. we got to make a statement on this because people are saying they don't need a driver's license. There's a bunch of people that claim I'm sovereign citizen of something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those. Uh, But this lady made all the right, made all the wrong claims and tried to play lawyer in it. And just don't play lawyer. Was she the only person in the car? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and she was texting and driving, and she refused to stop. Like, the police were behind her, and they got up next to her, and they couldn't get her attention because she wouldn't stop looking away from her phone driving down the street. So they're waving at her. They're hitting the horns. <laughs> she is real. Whatever she's doing on her phone while driving is way more interesting was, than the police. It was very important. Yeah. My guess is she was looking up the statutes and laws on <laughs> being pulled over so that she... There is a good chance of that. that you know? Be, that would be great. What were you doing? I was reading the law so I could become a lawyer immediately <laughs> upon being pulled over. <laughs> uh, yeah, they gently broke her window. How does and one gently her break her. a window? I, that's the part that I thought was so funny. I'm like, the news is just trying to be nice. They gently broke her window. And then I posted it on Facebook, and then someone had to make this comment of... Well, the police didn't have to. She wasn't committing any violent offense. I'm like, what? Just let her go? Like, that's our solution. I'll lock myself into the car until they leave. Yeah, right? <laughs> like, oh, you got us. Dang it. You got us. We're not allowed to break your window because you're doing anything violent. <laughs> and someone's like, well, they were trying. Someone tried to make the complete her argument, which failed with the police. You make the argument in court if you really want to do that. But uh -huh. the court is aware that the Supreme Court ruled on this, at least, and this person was not. There's a lot of social media stuff on it, but I don't know. It was it was way more amusing than I thought it should be, <laughs> but it did make me laugh. And it has, like, I don't know, 200 comments and a few hundred likes on it. It's really nuts. <laughs> like, people are debating this out. They're hashing it out of how you shouldn't have to have a driver's license. I'm like, there's some things I will argue with the government about. That's not one of them. <laughs> no. Uh, you, you need to at least prove to me that you know how to drive a car. In, there, it's like the Wesley Snipes, and he got caught up in the group of people that were convinced you don't have to pay taxes, and he went to prison oh, for it. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, dude, yeah. he was really convinced right up until the sentencing that you could get away with it. <laughs> like, he was really upset. Yeah, like, no, like, <laughs> you, need, you, need to, you need to own a large corporation if you want to get out of paying taxes. Yes, yeah, there is ways to do it. Not being, not just not paying them is not being, the way. Being passenger 57 <laughs> is not how you get out of paying taxes. That is very true. <laughs> Anyways. Always but on the IRS. Um, I did tweet a hint for something we got going on. Uh, we got the oh. big free NAS magical box. That oh. thing is amazing. That, I know. It's like boom, boom. boom. We had it on a table. We put it away, and it's too heavy for me to carry back in here uh, right now. Yeah. And Because, uh, I don't know, we cleaned up the office for the pork party. Yeah. And <laughs> so we didn't feel like messing it up just yet. We, we, also, we didn't want to get pork all over the... <laughs> We, yes. Yeah. Box. So we're going to be doing a bunch of torture tests to the free dance box. One of them was not, will it survive barbecue sauce? <laughs> Odd fact, though. It probably would because... This FreeNAS X10 system, a true NAS X10 system mm -hmm. they sent us, actually has not just redundant power supplies, but through the magic of 
things that they did, and I got to get some white papers on this to make sure I understand it better. Um, it has dual redundant motherboards that run independent operating systems on it. And let's go a step further. Both of these independent motherboards share the backplane that controls the hard drives themselves. Therefore, if an entire motherboard fails, the other one is the failover for it. So it's not just high availability on your NAS box, it's high availability at the node level. Uh, so each box, each RAID array actually has two controlling boards that can both see the array, and it's really, I'm, it's pretty neat. I'm learning about how it works so I can make sure I explain it to you guys better. I've read through some of the documentation, uh, but one of the things we're gonna be doing, and I'm, uh, we have a list of some of the fail tests we're gonna be doing, which is gonna be showing how when you shut down a motherboard, you can switch over to the other motherboard. And uh, that's it takes a little bit of work to set that up, but it, it can be done, and that's a cool feature about this system. Can you just so, like drop a paper clip on the motherboard or something and watch it just? Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, it failed. The price tag on this thing is a little hefty. We will not be dropping any paper clips. <laughs> but you just know, trying to make it easy. Trying to make it easy. <laughs> yeah. Good news is we can actually just unplug it, and it to produce the same effect. We're not allowed to physically destroy this thing because we do have to ship what it back. What is that? <laughs> I know. We, we, have a, we have a transformer that cranks out 30,000 volts. Speaking of which, we realized something. We have not zapped anything with high voltage. It's yet. true. So uh, on our to-do list is zap something with high voltage. <laughs> so we, oh, we should have tried cooking the beef or the pork yesterday with it. Cooking pork Dang with it. We did cook pork in a rice cooker. Yeah, yeah, that's it something works. we learned. We, so that does work. New info for you. New info. <laughs> new info available. You can cook pork in a rice cooker. Mm -hmm. yep. Is, yeah, or reheat it, I should say. We didn't well, yeah. It. yeah. And it cooked it quickly, too. I mean, it heated it up very quickly. Oh, uh, we did get one of the uh, guests that came over to try our flashbang sauce, so that was great. Oh my goodness! There's a video of it actually. He's very anime. I'll just on the insert. face spaces. Yeah, it's on the face spaces. It's got profanity in there. Oh, um, yeah. speaking Anytime of which, you eat flashbang, there's profanity. There's profanity. <laughs> you just can't help it. It's good stuff. <laughs> um, speaking of which, I we got our butts got us demonetized. What? I know. So. We finally happened to me, and I know everyone's been complaining about this, and uh, YouTube has some answering on this they should really do, which is some explaining mm -hmm. with the whole demonetization thing, which has been a great level of confusion. Uh, I've seen a lot of people posting about it. I have not been really caught up in it. And then all of a sudden, we, it gave me a notice in a video we did months ago about the cigarette butts. It says, this is not eligible for ads. And I'm thinking it's because it's got the word butt in it. But it's cigarette butts. That means there's more than one T. I know. Yeah, this Facebook letting us know, we demonetize your video, and they don't really give you much of an explanation why, which of course I'm not, I don't need to rehash this, but if you watch the comments from, uh, was it Philip Franco did a great video on it, and a couple other people did too, on the absolute utter confusion of demonetization by YouTube, because YouTube, I, we understand there's gotta be policies for things, but those policies are not uh, universally applied, and, uh, you know, I'm, I have a very small YouTube channel. Thank you for all the subscribers, but by comparison to some people out there, very small. But the big channels have the same problem. They're like, we have no visibility. Just because we have 7 million people subscribed to us, YouTube goes, yeah, we're not telling you anything. We're just kind of going, yeah. we'll give you as much information as I'll give the guy with the 10,000 subscribers. I don't know. That's kind of an aggravation because I generally think of uh, Google as a company that has some commitment to transparency. Uh, YouTube being a subsidiary of that, you would think they would have some commitment to transparency, but they seem not to have much of a commitment to transparency. Yeah. It's kind of, yeah. Do you think it's to, so that that people don't then try to circumvent it? Like if we know how they're Well, it's a good concept. If that, that, so people don't circumvent it, but the policy based on what YouTube does share with us yeah. does appear to be very arbitrarily applied. And that's what a lot, there's a lot of example videos out there and, and people commented on uh, the Vegas tragedy that some people got demonetized, others did not. And YouTube says, oh. we don't allow you allow monetizations on videos about tragedy. Okay, but there's monetization on some of them, why? Yeah. And not just like some small channel with a couple of views, like very large, like million view videos that mm. have monetization that the title is Las Vegas Shooter. So, it, so it, nice. I, I'm not going to put that in my title. Uh, and it may be even pick up me saying these words and will demonetize this particular video anyways. So, yeah, definitely <laughs> wow. mass confusion related to all that. So that's, yeah. Uh, yeah. Anyways, back to uh, relevant topics to us. <laughs> Well, that's relevant. That's relevant. Stop demonetizing us. Stop me. Stop, stop me, Townsend. We're just 
Yeah. Um, the Zen server project is really close to completion. I've already got Zen. the first part of Zen. First part of the video completed on that. Uh, for those of you on the chat stuff, uh, I got a nice email from a guy that said they really liked a Rocket Chat. I did reply back. I We really thought it was cool for the web interface, but we decided Rocket Chat was disastrous on the phone. And because we do so much communications on phone, uh, it just didn't work. It, it was not a uh, good, yeah. On the Android phones. On the iPhone, it worked fine. Right. Just saying. Yeah. Well, I'm not going to say it worked fine. It did work better. It worked better, yeah. But Fine uh, Fine is probably too far, but it did fine work Fine is probably too far. And it's not just over the cellular network, even a local connection. Yeah. Um, the app just randomly won't give you messages. Uh, it won't let you change the channels until you log out, log back in after you've been invited to a channel. Sometimes it wouldn't do. We had all kinds of just crazy problems with it. So, and I think that's one of the problems with some of these other open source apps and Slack competitors is the apps are just not as well written. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I don't know the details, uh, what went on behind the scenes to not have that app work, but it's definitely a challenge because a lot of open source projects do not have wonderful uh, companion apps, whatever the reason is. Mm -hmm. The programs themselves are wonderful and work really well, but we can't just use a web interface. We really need uh, because so much of our work is done out in the field, that's where we use a lot of the, that's Actually, our biggest use case for Slack is when we're not in the office, because we're not that big of a building, we can usually just yell at each other. We probably should type, <laughs> Steve prefers yell. Um, well. So we are out in the field, we need information about something that we just don't have access to, like, hey, I need the info for this or that, and uh, but never passwords. Never <laughs> passwords. But we share that information via Slack, and that's an easy way to do it. Mm -hmm. So that's a, yeah, that's it for the... Uh, Communication stuff. That's like the follow up on it. We're sticking with Slack. That's what I'll title that. We're sticking I'm with sticking Slack. Sticking with Slack. Yeah, it I mean, works. It works. So it's a good product. Yeah. I haven't had a problem with it. Um, does it does its job. Other than that, uh, I, I'm gonna get cranking out on these other videos. I have so many started, and that's always some of the videos you knew. If you ever want to know, watch the clock. If there are any clocks in any of my videos, and you'll notice, you know, like, <laughs> hey, Tom started the video, and now he's wearing a different shirt. Yeah, it was recorded a week later. <laughs> <laughs> I compile these uh, because of the methodologies that have to be used, especially with the Zen one, because it, uh, different hardware was used to start it, and then different hardware to use to finish it. Because we had a problem, and I ended up blowing that whole hour as I had talked about before. But I also had recorded video i can't use it because the way the it, it just didn't work right yeah. so i have started over on that so <laughs> more youtube stuff sometimes. coming more uh i published a video of me talking sql server so check out smlr.us mm. for our content if you're interested in the podcast stuff uh, that we posted we've got the video link on there we're also in november going back to microsoft we sent Ooh. the confirmation we sent emails we're waiting for the actually the confirmations of the um of the event it'll be at the microsoft connect event so uh i mentioned it last time and i'll mention it again if you I, someone did message me and i got a list people if you can if, I'll, I'll let you know once as soon as i know the full dates i'll be in new york if someone wants to say hi or I'll, if i got time to meet up with you i'm all cool with that show me around the city and have some fun and i love talking tech with people mm. so which is why I'm going to Microsoft. He really does. I don't shut up about this stuff. <laughs> I'm excited. I got to talk yeah. later on where I get to talk about yeah. things. And uh, I get to include my that slide I showed you. So oh, it's so wonderful. Yeah. It's, it's so wonderful. You'll see it. Yeah. I'll put it in the video and stuff. But it's just, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a tweet from the, the Goldman Sachs Elevator uh, Twitter account, which mm -hmm. it has some awkward moments in it but it, it basically says you really want to get to know someone on a first date ask them their first teacher's name their first pet's name and then go read all their emails yeah <laughs> <And> that's, <laughs> but that's really true i mean you that these are things you can do so it really is i remember seeing a, a facebook thing not too long ago that was one of those like it was you know the questionnaires but hidden within them was the like what street did you grow up on yes like, what was your mother's maiden name? And people were filling them out. And I'm like, oh, my Lord. Um. <laughs> yeah, that data is, yeah. And, I, you know, and, of course, one of the things I talk about in their video is why you shouldn't answer with the real answers. You can give the real answers on Facebook, but then you yeah. set up the different answers there. And this is how we can use LastPass to help you remember what those different answers are. Mm -hmm. Because you also then give different answers to different websites. And these are this is a lot of what my talk is about. These are all these little things you may not have thought of. But it's also even things like, my email address is tomandlawrencesystems.com. I don't hide that. Do you know what I do hide? Do you know what email address I'm using for LastPass? I'll give you a hint. It's not tomandlawrencesystems.com. Mm -mm. <laughs> Matter of fact, tomandlawrencesystems.com in some places is a honey token. Oh, really? You familiar with what honey tokens are? Um... Honey tokens are 
things you set up that you expect people to try to hack. Oh yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So they refer to them as honey tokens. So I set things up, like I created but don't use an account at LastPass, TomAlarmSystems.com. That way I see how many times a day people try to issue password resets and things like that. It's actually, <laughs> I get a lot of these. My email address registered for Facebook is not TomAlarmSystems.com, but there is one registered at TomAlarmSystems.com, so I can see how many password attempt resets that gets. So I'm like, look, which is only justifying my reason for not using that. Yeah. You know, And I don't believe in security through obscurity, but not having a common email address like that... Um, registered with every account that I ever set up is mm -hmm. important. Sure. It, it makes the attack vector a little bit harder, so the obvious stuff, you know, and anything I can do to help slow them down, complicated passwords, two-factor authentication, not using timeatlearnsystems.com for every major account, like, you know, Bitcoin and everything yeah. else, so, yeah. Oh, we still gotta do a Bitcoin talk at one point. And I made yeah. me think of that because someone sent me some Bitcoin. And, uh, oh, yay! Apparently they liked a post I did on Reddit and they sent me Bitcoin, and I was like, thank you. Kind stranger who sent me Bitcoin. <laughs> a Bitcoin? They sent you a Bitcoin? I wish. I was going to say, isn't that worth like a... like? No, they sent me, um, at the time, what it was trading at was $5 of the Bitcoin. Okay. So, fair enough. I'll yeah. take it. Uh, absolutely. I'd, but like, add but if someone wants it to send me a Bitcoin, that's A cool. Bitcoin, isn't it like, it's like, is it close to a thousand bucks or something like that? I think it's at like 1600 I don't know. Oh, is it 1600 now? You okay. know what we have? If only there were some kind of device, device that we could use to get on... Current Bitcoin price. Let's call it an information superhighway. One BTC equals 5,194 United States dollars. Holy crap! $5,194 as of right now in October something something of 2017. So yes, I, I wish they sent me a Bitcoin. I gotta find some Bitcoin. You know what I need to do? I'll start putting uh, Bitcoin, the QR codes and stuff, so you can send me Bitcoin. I'll set that up as a project for today, so as if I don't have enough projects. Yeah, right. Yeah, of course. Yes, yes. So fun times, yep. and uh, we're going to get back to work because things have happened. And, oh, boy. Uh, oh, uh, I'm also going to do a video on what happens when you break your Google Fi phone. Not that I broke mine. No. Well, one of my staff did. We know somebody who did. <laughs> they broke theirs. We know a guy. <laughs> we know a guy. So we're going to follow through and walk you through the process of what had to be done to make that happen. Uh, because it turns out there's things that didn't go right. And not because of Google. This is things that we had to plan and why I plan things different and why he did something different and how we had to solve that problem is going to be a video. Problem solvers. Problem solvers. <laughs> and it took, a, it took a second five phone to make this all work. So oh, wow. we're going to talk about that. <laughs> all right. All right. Thanks Until for watching. Then. Like to continue your like and subscribe. Well, thank you for all 10,300 of you as of this morning. That's what it said. That's awesome. That's the stats. I'm happy Yay. about that. All right. All thanks. right. See you next week.